Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Business As Usual. It plays two to four players, takes about 75 minutes to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game Business As Usual, you will be playing as a young entrepreneur, and you are going to be uh, located on an island, moving around, attempting to collect buildings, uh, gather toll booths and pay tolls, and earn respect. Respect is the most important thing in this game, and if you can get 10 of it before anybody else, you'll win. And along the way, you're going to meet influencers, lobbyists, upgrades, take part in presidential elections, gather resources, and uh, utilize really powerful cards when you're capable of doing so. And of course, at the end of your turn, if you're able to gather that respect before anybody else does, you'll win the game. Will you become the most uh, impressive budding entrepreneur out there on the island, or will you just become another one of those basic influencers? We'll take it down below, I'll show you how it's played, what it looks like, and then we'll come up and discuss the game business as you usual right now. Welcome young entrepreneur to the island and the game business as usual. I went ahead and set the game up for four players so you can see all four different player colors. In the game you're going to be getting a board, you're going to be getting four different player icons which will indicate your character which will all start in the middle of the board and then you're going to get a bunch of player cards. Uh, you're going to have the influencer deck which will be over here, the objective deck, the upgrade, and the lobbyist deck. Set them in the spaces indicated by the name. You're also going to go ahead and take the die and give it to the player who's going to start the game. Every single player is going to be getting a player board, eight gold, one of these tokens which will be on all of the ones except for respect. Go ahead and set the currency aside in a big pool and give everybody eight. Everybody will get one resource of the three different types. There's going to be a clout, time, and employees. And then of course give every single player a voting token and their little uh, houses here, businesses, and their toll booths. You go ahead and set aside the event deck, the presidential deck, and the non-for-profit cards, and of course the three unique cards in the game that will earn you respect, the toll booth tycoon, the business mogul, and the lobbying guru. Uh, objective cards are what you need in order to win the game. These are what give you respect, and there's certain requests that they ask. Like for instance, if you pass four opponent-owned toll booths on a single turn, you can turn this in and gain a respect. Ten respect is what you need in order for you to win the game. The turn order is pretty simple. You start by collecting profits, and your profits are going to be based on your board here, whether you're gathering gold, time, employees, or clout. And these are the four different resources here you'll be taking based on what you've collected. Uh, after that, then you're going to go ahead and take and resolve an event card. These are the event cards. When you draw one, you'll read out and do what it says. Most of the time, they're going to be a presidential election of some sort, or something that's going to happen um, instantaneously, like you'll be able to steal two gold from an opponent. Uh, after you've completed that event, then you're going to move on to rolling the die. You'll take the die here, and you're going to go ahead and roll it. And based on the number, we'll be determining the amount of actions you get to take in the game. Uh, the actions you can choose to take, well, you can purchase a bit. Business. And there's a ton of different businesses on the board here. Um, specifically, you'll gather one of these guys here. You'll pay the cost indicated in the rulebook based on the location. There's four different location areas. And uh, each of them are going to have a standard cost plus a, a bonus cost based on the area. So if you're buying this one here, it'll cost a standard amount plus an added clout for being in the blue area or time or employees or gold. Um, each of these have different types of buildings. And whenever you buy something specifically like the non profit, you'll take a non-profit and it'll give you some type of benefit which is going to happen after this. So once you roll the die and you've gathered the correct amount of actions, which is four in this case, you're then going to go ahead and collect non-for-profit rewards or non-profit rewards if you have any. If not, you'll move on to completing actions. So purchasing a building, you can go ahead and uh, initiate a lobbyist act auction. Uh, you can go ahead and collect uh, taxes from the central bank, which is going to be this here is like the free parking area here and you can move uh, when your character moves it's going to cost you to move through every single one of these little barricades so that could be one uh, every time you cross over a toll booth which could be two and uh, it could and uh, of course you can also go ahead and go into locations and purchase them uh, so for instance if i wanted to i can go one i can go one two 
three, and then I can go ahead and purchase this. I would spend the amount of currency required. I would take one of my little buildings here and I would earn it. And whenever you buy certain buildings, you're going to go up on these tracks here based on what you're gathering. And uh, that's basically the idea of the game. Of course, you can also go to these certain areas on the board as well. So for instance, if my character is here, and let's say that I had four actions, I could go one, two, three, and then I can go ahead and pick up one of these guys here. They also have costs uh, uh, associated with them as well. Influencers typically are going to let you do certain things in the game, like action cards as well. There's upgrades that uh, there's two different types. You can merge together businesses. And uh, there's also another one in here that lets you improve businesses. And then you have lobbyists. These are going to be auctions. Um, and which you're going to go ahead and take place whenever you do a certain type of uh, auction you'll be bidding like this close fist and then you'll reveal and of course objectives they'll ask you to do a certain thing when you do it and complete it you'll gain respect on your little track here and when you get to 10 that will signify the end of the game and that you have won and that's pretty much the idea of the game the last little bit of it is when you uh, start the game off each of your characters has a unique benefit for instance this character here has speed which means they get an extra action so if they roll a four, they get to have five actions on their turn. Or this character over here starts the game with two influencers to begin with, as opposed to having to pay for them. And uh, that's it. Let's go ahead and discuss the game above. I'll give my review and whether or not you should pick this game up. Uh, and we're, of course, link in the description to pick it up. Business as usual is an action management game. We're going to be rolling a die, gathering actions, and using those actions to move around the board, gathering businesses, acquiring toll booths, and drawing cards that will allow you to do certain events, that will allow you to gain respect, and of course allow you to merge or upgrade buildings. These are all going to influence your ability to gather resources on your turn, and that's the most important thing is gathering these resources, because then they're going to allow you to complete objectives. Uh, gathering these objectives and then utilizing them to earn respect is what you need to do in the game because respect is even more important than money and you'll be doing so on the island and there's four different areas on the island you'll be moving to you go to the blue the red the gold area and the green area to gather the certain types of buildings to increase your value as you can control the game uh, there's also of course little things you can do like presidential elections uh, two presidents will pop out when that happens and you'll be able to bid and then uh, the person uh, so you don't bid uh, you'll be able to vote and whoever um, is voted in. That's a unique uh, effect that will take place throughout the entire game, and you'll leave that president out until the next presidential election takes place. They Usually they're going to benefit you in some way or provide some type of negative for everybody in the game, so it's a complete world or game changer. Uh, this game here is kind of like it's like a twist on like Monopoly in, in the fact that you're having these resources to spend and buy certain buildings, and then there's a cost to go through certain toll booths and a bonus to gain when having certain buildings, and and um, instead of uh, your objective being to control the board, your objective is to gather respect cards. So it has a nice little additional take that feel as well with the different event cards and lobbyists that you can play throughout the game. And of course, it has a little bit of a Catan feel too, because you're going to be taking these cards here whenever you complete them. For instance, this card goes to the player who owns the most businesses. If another player owns more businesses, they'll get the card. And these are all worth one respect. So if you can control them, that's kind of like the longest road in Catan. Uh, it's one way to gather those a victory point objective card. So like I said, a merger between, I guess, Catan, a little bit of Take That Game, and Monopoly, all in the sense that you're gathering properties, you're gaining valuable influence, and of course resources. And on the other end, you need these respect points in order to win the game. And you have to utilize your actions wisely. Each of your characters is better in one way or another than another player, but essentially you all are trying to do the same thing, moving across the board. Another interesting thing about the game, too, is these toll booths. There's toll booths across the board. They, they function like barricades, but with one unique difference. So you can buy them. And when you buy them, you put a little token on them, indicating that it is yours. And whenever somebody crosses it, they'll have to pay you. Similar to landing on Boardwalker Park, Park Place uh, in Monopoly, just not nearly as uh, insanely mean. Uh, this game does have that little uh, aspect of trading influence and currency and whatnot throughout the game, which is nice, but it's not extremely aggressive to the point where you feel like you're being overloaded. Um, another thing to note, too, is yes, because you are technically rolling rolling to move, so to speak. You're rolling the die, gathering actions, utilizing those actions to move and or purchase certain things. You may roll a one, you may roll a six. And uh, in some instances, you might get a string of bad luck or string string of extremely good luck. And in this case, 
I'm not a big fan of that specific type of mechanic. That's more of a classical mechanic. So for those of you who enjoy those games like Monopoly, who enjoy the roll to move aspect, you can do that. There's also a variant, which would I would prefer um, and recommend as well to play, which gives you four actions on a turn. You'll just simply have uh, four actions and uh, certain characters will get bonus actions when they, uh, when they have their specific cards that tell them they do. And of course you can buy additional actions too, which is a nice variant on the game for those of you who are more modern uh, uh, board gamers. Um, I also really enjoy the different elections and the in the bidding process. I think that's a lot of fun moving around the board and collecting certain properties and controlling them. Uh, this game can go on rather long or it can be a little shorter. It's it's definitely not Monopoly length. It's definitely shorter than that. The 90 minute runtime is approximately correct in the game. Uh, the card cards are all high quality. The game feels like it's it's pr it's pretty much just done as it stands and it looks good. All the pieces are high quality and the tokens and whatnot. And you know what your influence is and your board and expresses like the different resources you need. Uh, art, artwork is, is, is fine. The different character boards are fine. I do really like the main game board itself. I think that really stands out and looks good table presence wise on the board there and moving around placing your buildings on. It does feel like you're actually gathering these buildings and these toll booths as you go around the board and you're very excited when somebody needs to go into a certain area that's loaded with your toll booths because you're going to get paid out quite a bit. And there's a ton of player interaction as well. Uh, this game, like I said, it does share similar qualities to those other games, but it is uniquely different in its own ways. Uh, due to the fact that it integrates all those different aspects of those games, kind of gets rid of a lot of the ones uh, aspects I do not like, uh, while still keeping the, the role to move, which like I said, if you just go ahead and simply take the four actions, I would suggest doing that. But at its core essence, it still stands that those mechanics are present in the game. So, for those of you guys who like a little bit of a cut through entrepreneurial business type game where you're trying to gather these buildings and all this stuff around the board, gathering cards and resources and using them and trading them and, and bidding on them things and buying things, uh, economic style game, you're going to enjoy this game. For those of you who don't like a game that's a little more on the classical side in terms of action management and of course buying properties and your objective obviously being to mess with your opponents and gather your objective cards in order to gain the respect to win the game, you're going to really like this game. Uh, this game is currently on Kickstarter. Uh, you can pick it up and link in the description below if you're interested in business as usual. Uh, this game, like I said, is, in my opinion, is going to stand in one of two areas. People who are either going to really enjoy this game based on the economical standpoint or people who are not going to like it because of the classical aspect of the game. I think it's right down the middle for me. I did enjoy this game. Uh, there's definitely elements I really, really enjoyed and some that I definitely think are going to be a little more on that classic side and because of that I was like oh okay it's fine but overall a solid little game enjoyable we had a lot of fun and messing with players is always enjoyable in these economic games if you're interested like I said down below link in the description all right outro Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Business as usual. If you wanna pick up the game, you know where to go. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. It greatly helps out the algorithm and lets you see more videos of these type of games, just like this one, for instance. You can also go ahead and check out my wife's game, Moonshell, a mermaid game. It's coming out March 2nd, next month. It's very, it's really close. We're excited about that. There'll be a link in the description as well for that. It is a puzzle game involving mermaids, rotation of a board, gathering shells, placing them on your own player board, and attempting to then take those uh, shells and make beautiful combinations utilizing open and closed or secret objectives, along with some unique mermaid powers for each of the players. Also, go ahead and check out our Discord, check out our Patreon. Patreons, thank you so much for supporting us. It helps us greatly by being able to send you guys out stuff and for shipping whenever we do giveaways on our live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST you can see us play games just like this one every Wednesday. And we'll be playing Moonshell up until the point where it's, it's over with, along with, of course, other games too. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will have some business with you next time. I'll do business as usual with you. We'll have, we'll have business as usual with you next time. I don't know, one of those will work.